Hi, hello, this is Giri, teaching 10th Mathematics, the chapter Real Numbers. Here is the first week of annual academic calendar 2020 and 21 and this is part 2 video. In this video, we will learn the concepts of Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic and Euclid's Division Lemma. Dear students, now you see here it is the Fundamental Theorem of arithmetic let us see its statement the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of prime factors in an unique way i shall repeat every composite number can be expressed as a product of prime factors in a unique way means in only one single way unique means in only one way you may try to understand first of all what is a composite number composite numbers means a number which is having more than two factors is called composite number a number with exactly two factors is called prime number and a number which is having more than two factors is called composite number now every composite number can be expressed as product of prime factors in only one way now let us try to understand this statement with a given example now if you look at this example 30 you can write 30 as 2 into 3 into 5 2 3 6 6 5 6 30 you see you can write 30 as the product of three prime numbers 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number and 5 is a prime number you can write 13 only in this way and you cannot write 13 any other way as the product of prime numbers only of course you can write 30 as 6 into 5 but 6 is not a prime number. Therefore, you can write 30 as the product of prime numbers in only one way too, and there is no other way. Similarly, look at 36. You can write 36 as 4 into 9. This 4 is 2 into 2 and this 9 is 3 into 3. 2 into 2 is 2 square and 3 into 3 is 3 square. Therefore, you can write 36 as 2 square into 3 square. You can write 36 as the product of prime numbers in only one way. Similarly, 60. 60 is nothing but 4 times of 15. 4 is 2 square and 15 is 3 into 5. Therefore, 60 can be written as 2 square into 3 into 5. This is the only one way in which 60 can be written as the product of prime numbers. This is called fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every composite number can be expressed as the product of prime factors in a unique way. Now go for another example 420. This 420 you can write it as 2 into 210. Again you can split 210 as 2 into 55. And you can split this 55 as 5 into 11. Therefore finally 420 is equal to 2 into 2 into 5 into 11. 2 into 2 is 2 square into 5 into 11. Therefore 420 can be written as the product of prime factors as 2 square into 5 into 11. This is again an unique way. This is what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Note, writing any composite number in this form is called exponential form or prime factorization method. You see, you wrote 30 as 2 into 3 into 5. And you wrote 36 as 2 square into 3 square. You wrote 60 as 2 square into 3 into 5. We wrote 420 as 2 square into 5 into 11. All these numbers can be written as the product of prime numbers. This type of writing all these numbers is called exponential form. And the method is called prime factorization method. The next concept is HCF and LCM. HCF stands for highest common factor and LCM stands for least common multiple. You come across what is HCF and what is LCM in your previous classes. Now here is a question. Find HCF and LCM of the numbers 60 and 75 using prime factorization. I shall repeat. Find HCF and LCM of 60 and 75 using prime factorization. Here is the solution. First of all, write 60 as the product of prime factors. 60 is nothing but 2 into 30. 
again 2 into 2 into 30 is 15 again 15 is 3 into 5 therefore 60 is 2 square into 3 into 5 and the second number is 75 75 can be written as 3 into 25 this 25 can be written as 5 into 5 therefore finally 75 is equal to 3 into 5 square now we wrote the factors of 60 as 2 square into 3 into 5 and we wrote the factors of 75 as 3 into 5 square now we have to find the HCF HCF means it is the product of common factors with their respective least exponents here HCF is nothing but the product of common factors with their respective least exponents we look at these two products here what are the common factors you pick up here the factor is 2 but there is no 2 in 75 here is a factor 3 in 60 3 is also a factor of 75 therefore HCF is equal to 3 in 2 here 5 is a factor of 60 and 5 square is a factor of 75 therefore which is common 5 and 5 square the common is 5 otherwise now out of these common factors here the exponent is 1 here the exponent of 5 is 2 therefore what is the least exponent 1 therefore you have to consider 5 only HCF is 3 into 5 these are common factors in both 60 and 75 what is the product of 3 into 5? 3 into 5 is 15. Therefore, HCF of 60 and 75 is equal to 15. HCF is nothing but the product of common factors with their respect to least exponents. Now, let us find LCM. In finding LCM, we have to consider the product of different factors with their respect to highest exponents. In the previous case, we took common factors and we took the least exponents. And in finding LCM, we have to take all different factors with their highest exponents. You see, here 2 is a factor, but here there is no 2. Even though there is no 2 in 75, you have to take this 2 square to find LCM. The highest power of 2 here is 2 and here the highest exponent of 2 is 0 therefore you have to consider 2 square here we have 3 here also 3 therefore take 3 here we have 5 but here 5 square what is the highest of power 5 square therefore take 5 square and you find the product of all these 2 square is 4 and this is 3 5 square is 25 4 into 3 into 25 for 25 is 100 into 3 is 300. Therefore, the product of different factors with their respect to highest exponents is LCM. And the product of common factors with their respect to least exponents is HCF. Hello students, are you attentive? Okay. Here is the next concept. This is Euclid's division lemma. Let us know the statement of this. Euclid's division lemma. The statement is, Given positive integers a and b, then there exists a unique pair of integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r, where r is greater than or equal to 0 but less than b. This is the statement of Euclid's division lemma. I shall repeat. Given positive integers a and b, then there exists an unique pair of integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r where r is greater than or equal to 0 and but less than b. Now let us try to understand this division lemma with a simple example. For example, if we divide 7 with 2, then we can write 7 as 2 times of 3 plus 1. Isn't it? You see, look at this. Look at this division. Here this is the division. If we divide 7 with 2, this 2 in 7 3 times, 3, 2, 6 and if you separate 6 from 7 you will get 1. Now this is dividend, 7 is the dividend and 2 is the divisor, 3 is the coefficient and 1 is the remainder. Good. Now you can write this, now you can write this 7 
as the product of 2 and 3 plus the remainder 1. This is division rule. Dividend is equal to divisor into coefficient plus remainder. Therefore, you can write 7 as 2 into 3 plus 1. You see, if we divide 7 with 2, then 7 is equal to 2 times of 3 plus 1. The remainder should always be either 0 or less than the divisor. Here, if we divide this number with 2, the remainder should not be 2. It should be less than 2. Similarly, if we divide this number with 3, the remainder should be either 0, 1 or 2. Since we are dividing this 7 with 2, this 7 is equal to 2 times of 3 plus 1 and this 1 means remainder should be rather than or equal to 0 but less than the divisor 2. This is the Euclid's division lemma. Now, here if you look at the statement, there are two integers a and b where a is greater than b. Since a is greater than b, you can divide a with b. If you divide a with b, then there may be some coefficient. Let us name the coefficient as q. And there may be some remainder. Let us take the remainder as r. Now, if you divide a with b, then b in a coefficient times. And if you get the coefficient, then you have to multiply these two. b into q is bq. And if you subtract bq from the dividend a, you will get r. So that you can write the a value as b into q plus remainder r. You see, a is equal to bq plus r. Here, the remainder should be, here what is the remainder in this case? The remainder is r. Therefore, the remainder should be greater than or equal to 0, but it should be less than b, less than the divisor. To compare this with this given example, so that you can understand very easily. You see, the statement is, given positive integers a and b, then there exists an unique pair of integers q and r satisfying that a is equal to bq plus r, where r is greater than or equal to 0 but less than b. How can you understand this? By taking 7 and 2. If you divide 7 with 2, this 2 in 7 3 times, 3 2 6 and the remainder is 1. Therefore, you can write 7 as 2 times of 3 plus 1. You can write 7 as 2 times of 3 plus 1. Where the remainder 1 is greater than or equal to 0 but less than the divisor 2. Similarly, if you divide a with b, there are two integers a and b. If you divide a with b, then there is some coefficient q and the remainder is r. Therefore, you can write this a by using division rule as a is equal to b into q plus r. If you go for any division, either the remainder is 0 or the remainder may be positive value and it should be less than this divisor. Therefore, R should be greater than or equal to 0 but less than B. This is Euclid's division lemma. Now, let us find the HCF of 50 and 70 using Euclid's division lemma. It is a very important model as far as the public exams are concerned. Look at the question again. Find the HCF of 50 and 70 using Euclid's division lemma. HCF is also called GCD. You may please keep in mind. HCF means highest common factor and GCD means greatest common divisor. Factor and divisor are both same. Highest common factor is HCF. GCD means greatest common divisor. Both are same. Find the HCF of 50 and 70 using Euclid's division lemma. Here is the solution. Now let us write the statement of the division lemma first of all. Given positive integers a and b, then there is an unique pair of integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r where 0 is less than or equal to r is less than b. Now, using division rule, out of 50 and 70, we have given two numbers 50 and 70 now. Out of these numbers 50 and 70, the biggest number is 70. Now, we have to divide this 70 with 50. Now, this 50 in 70, one time. Therefore, 70 is equal to one time of 50. What is 1 into 50 is 50. Now, if you subtract 50 from 70, you will get 20. Therefore, the remainder is 20. 
70 can be written as 50 times of 1 plus 20. Here, A is equal to 70, B is equal to 50, and Q is equal to quotient is 1, and the remainder is 20. Here, the remainder is not 0. We have to do this same division rule till you get the remainder 0. Now, in the first case, you took 70 and 50. And in the next case, we have to consider the divisor and the remainder in all the steps. Now, you consider 50 and 20 now. Out of 50 and 20, 50 is greater than 20. Therefore, divide 50 with 20. Now, you can write 50 as 2 times of 20. What is 2 times of 20? 40. And what is the remainder? 10. Therefore, 50 is equal to 20 into 2 plus 10. Here A is equal to 50, A is equal to 50, and B is equal to 20, Q coefficient is 2, and the remainder is 10. Again, the remainder is not 0. Since the remainder is not 0, again you have to go for the next step, where you have to consider the B value and the remainder. You have to consider the divisor and the remainder. Divisor is 20 and the remainder is 10. Now, consider... 20 and 10. Now, if you divide 20 with 10, you can write 20 is equal to 2 times of 10 plus 0. Here, you get the remainder 0. Since the remainder is 0, in this case, what is the divisor? At the step of getting 0 in the remainder place, what is the divisor? Divisor is 10. Since the divisor is 10, the HCF of 50 and 70 is equal to 10. In this process, you have to find the HCF of two numbers using Euclid's division lemma. And we will learn some more questions from the exercises of the chapter real numbers in the next video. Thank you. Thank you one and all.